subject this morning, <clears throat> Jesus Christ, human or divine. That has been a controversial subject for quite some time, but it is quite obvious that there are two parts to the question. Jesus, the man with the personality and the divinity <coughs> which expressed itself through that man, and finally took complete possession of that vehicle to express so freely and so wonderfully the divine consciousness of God, especially the aspect of love and compassion. And so we must remember that all channels of God which means all the saints, all the masters, all the great ones, when they take on a vehicle as a body, take on the delusion which goes with that consciousness in which the vehicle exists. In other words, worldly consciousness. And so Jesus, although he expressed the divinity of God, still also expressed some of the delusion which it was necessary that he take on, taking on a physical body. A master once told me, he says, no matter whether a saint has been liberated or not, whenever he takes on the body and comes again, he takes on some delusion with it. And we have this illustrated when Jesus said on the cross, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? There he expressed the physical aspect, the personality aspect. For a moment he doubted just a bit whether God was with him or not. Of course, that is just momentarily it comes to all. With the Master I've seen that very same thing happen, but in the next moment he was right back in his divine nature. I've also noticed with the Master that we would be acting, living just like two ordinary human beings, and in the next moment he would completely change, and you'd see an entirely different nature, the divine nature which he exemplified. And so it was and is with all. <coughs> now, as I have said, we have Jesus, the man, and Jesus, the Christ. Jesus, the man, with his personality, and we have Jesus, who expressed Christ's consciousness, in fact, whom the consciousness of God used to express his great will. Jesus the Christ. We have this in all saints, especially one comes to my mind is Jadava, King Jadava in India, long time ago. Jadava the Krishna. Krishna means Christ consciousness, that's all. They might say Buddha the Christ, Mohammed the Christ, King Jadava, who expressed Christ consciousness. Jadava the Krishna. Also, as I have said in the Master, those of you who had the privilege of meeting him realize that he had also, besides the personality, which was so dynamic, that he had the divinity there, which superseded his personality. So it is with Jesus. Certainly, the body was human. It was the vehicle through which the divinity of God spoke as the Christ consciousness, Jesus the Christ. There have been others, as I have said, who have mani manifested Christ consciousness, all the saints, the great ones of which we know in history. Our own master expressed that. Our great gurus were all Christ. Bawaji, Vairadimasya, Sri Kesvaji, all expressed Christ consciousness. 
Now, Jesus was fully aware of this. He was most humble because he did say, as I read in the scripture, the things that I do, ye shall do, and greater things. He realized that he was not the only expression of God's great consciousness and love, but each and every one can express that divinity of God's presence. That's how great Jesus was, because he said those very words. These things which I do, ye shall do, and greater. He could have added, if, if you lift your consciousness, if you lift the Son of Man so that he becomes a Son of God, then the divinity can manifest through you. I remember one little instance that comes to my mind when the Master was writing the autobiography up in the Hermitage in Encinitas. There a vision came. And there Jesus came with the Holy Grail and brought it down to him. And he said that we both drink of the same cup. Cup of what? Cup of Christ consciousness. And so Jesus was not only a man with a personality, but he was an instrument through which the divine consciousness spoke. And remember the lesson that we can learn, that each and every one of us can be that. If it is God's will, through his grace, we can manifest the divinity which Jesus manifested. That is, we can manifest some aspect of God. The aspect which Jesus manifested was especially love and compassion, which we recited together in the Master's tribute to him. In Revelation, we read as follows. In the third chapter, the 21st verse, To him that overcometh, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. Now, there's your answer. Jesus had to overcome. People who think that he didn't have any troubles are mistaken even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. So, why shouldn't we take heart? Jesus had to overcome because when he took on the vehicle of his body, he took on the delusion. And with delusion, we have temptation and trials and trouble. But we also have the divine nature within us which can overcome all things. And we can then sit down, as Jesus sat down, with our one common Father. Now the divine aspect in all saints, especially in, in Jesus, began to express itself when he was about 12 years of age, as you will remember. It expresses itself at different ages. I remember in talking to the Master, he said when he was very young, he saw that this whole life was a show, and he had uh, uh, glimpses of his previous existences, and he had that divine aspect creeping out at an early age. Jesus, as I said, began to notice it, notice it at 12. When you will remember in the Bible, it said that they found him mixing with the lawyers and the doctors, and the learned men in the temple at about 12 years of age. Larry de Marcher, I believe, received an awakening at about 33 years of age. And so the divine aspect comes at different times. So no matter what your age is, if it's along a little bit, don't get discouraged, because you can awaken that divine aspect within yourselves at any age. Jesus, at about the age of 12, said, I must be about my father's business. Surely the divine consciousness was being aroused in Jesus. For in St. Luke, we read those words, I must be about my father's business. And so 
Then I believe Jesus disappeared somewhere. He disappeared, and in St. Luke it said he disappeared into the desert and was, and his whereabouts was not known. The divine pull was very strong in Jesus at that time. And the divine pull naturally would take him to the land of spiritual wealth and consciousness or India. That great divine pull would not be satisfied. And so the theory that Jesus went to India at about the age of 13 <coughs> has been substantiated by the manuscript which Nicholas Notovich found in India in one of the monasteries in Tibet, which shows that Jesus did go to India, the land of spiritual wealth. India has given to the world religion and philosophy. And is it any wonder that savants and philosophers went to India? Is it hard to realize that perhaps Jesus was drawn there also? And that is what has been proven by Nicholas Notovich's work, The Unknown Life of Jesus. Of course, some people say they cannot reconcile the fact that how, how why would Jesus go to to uh, India, that backward land of India, that heathen India. But if you will remember, as I said last Thursday night, 5,000 years before, when our ancestors in Europe were roaming around searching for food like barbarians in the forests, India, the Hindus were discussing life and death and those finer problems of life long ago. And so naturally we can see that India has contributed religion and philosophy to the world naturally. Savants and philosophers went there searching it out. Why not Jesus? And so that's where he went. He went to India. There are other reasons for him going to India which perhaps you have forgotten. The three, the three wise men came from India with their gold and frankincense and myrrh. And so perhaps there was an attraction through that avenue, through the channel of those three wise men drawing him back to India. 